Okay, you're going to think this is crazy, and you won't be wrong. But guys, have you seen Yadier Molina's mansion? Did God release his angelic architects and engineers to create this wonderful heaven-on-earth mansion, which has a batting cage and more than enough features to make for the perfect paradise? Let's go find out. If you've ever been to or live in the St. Louis area in Missouri, you know that one of the best parts to live in is the Creve Coeur, a suburban town known for its beautiful parks, restaurants, and coffee shops. But it may be a bit expensive to enjoy all the benefits benefits that come with this town, but not for 10-time All-Star Yadier Molina. In 2015, when he was celebrating being called to his seventh consecutive All-Star game, reaching his 100th career home run, winning his eighth consecutive Gold Glove Award and fourth Platinum Gold Award, he achieved something else off the field. You know, being one of the greatest catchers in the history of the MLB, all these accolades were not surprising anymore at that time. But Molina looked at that year and said, you know what? I'm going to crown you up with another big accomplishment. And through the help of his agent, Melvin Roman of MDR Sports Management, he bought a house in Crevcore, Missouri. That year, he had earned a sum of $15 million from salary alone, so when he splashed $2.23 million for his dream house that has everything, his account did not break a sweat. And best believe this house has everything, but before you start plotting out plans to go see it, especially after we tell you all that is in it, stop. Getting into the Allegro Lake Estates, where Molina's mansion is located, is almost impossible. The estate is highly secured, well-gated, and mostly surrounded by vegetation. And unfortunately, the only info of the place we can provide you right now is just this bird's eye view. Okay, just kidding. We do have an exclusive view of the entire mansion. All right, let's zoom right in now. The house covers approximately 6,039 square feet in a 1.08 acre lot. After every game or outing with the family, or just himself, Molina has three garages to choose from to put one of his cars in. Cars because Molina does have a few of them. There is this impressive Lamborghini Huracan or his Rolls Royce car, or even more impressive collection already sitting in this garage. As Molina steps out of one of his luxurious cars, he can decide to just head inside the house or take in the beautiful landscape outside. The stone bridge located within the compound is indeed beautiful, but so are the well-cut lawns, an in-ground sprinkler system, and the outdoor pool which is surrounded by vegetation and a sitting area. This makes you wonder if Molina has ever decided to jump into the pool without any swim trunks after he had had an awful day in the field. But inside the house, boy oh boy. Stepping into the house feels like stepping into heaven, and this is not just because of the predominantly white walls, six panel doors, cathedral ceilings, sparkling chandeliers hanging from six bedrooms that the house has, or the two and a half bathrooms and seven full baths it has. But this paradise can easily pass for what comfort may look like in the afterlife. life. However, the presence of a bar probably disqualifies it from being a makeshift heaven. And we're not saying this because the bar is in terrible shape, but because it's built like a commercial bar, which can seat a big crowd, get people to have an amazing time. This is not just a small portion of the house with a wooden cabinet and a few drinks. Speaking of crowds, another thing that can pull a party to Molina's house is his gazebo with a barbecue grill, which sits outside near the pool. The house is further divided into various bedroom quarters. There are in-law quarters, maid's quarters, a master bedroom suite, and other bedrooms. One of the bedrooms is used as a nursery with a laundry nearby to make up the first floor. Upstairs, you'd find three bedroom suites, another laundry, and a bonus room. But of course, the best bedroom still remains the master bedroom suite, which has a whirlpool, double sinks, and separate showers with double entries, double vanities, and marble baths. There's also walk-in closets, a dressing area, a refrigerator, and heated floors. Somewhere around the house lies a hot tub and a private in-ground pool. But it's not only baths and relaxation for the Molinas alone, even though they deserve it considering all the hard work that goes into playing baseball and running a family. And for that, their stomachs also deserve the best treatments possible, and they get it from the well-equipped kitchen and dining areas. It's a sit-and-eat kind of kitchen, even though there still exists a 
breakfast room. There's also a hearth room, a butler's pantry, custom cabinetry, center island, and separate special dining room. This is the type of kitchen that Gordon Ramsay himself would be proud of. But before we get into the most interesting part of the house, here are other amazing features that make the Molinas even more comfortable. We're talking bookcases, coffered ceilings, special millwork, vaulted ceilings, burglar alarms, security lighting, a gym, and lots more. But finally, the most interesting part of the house has to be the custom batting cage. Yep, you heard that one right. Molina also has a batting cage with padded green walls, netting, quaint lighting, and a green floor to crown the mimicking of a baseball field. So do you think it'd be weird to host a Cardinals game here? Definitely, many would want to come even if the tickets were $20,000 per ticket, and even if they had to stand to watch the game while risking getting hit by a fastball. It also appears like the batting cage can be repurposed for other sport activities like basketball because of the small hoop stands that sit at the left-hand corner. His kids must be the star players of these hoops. Maybe his first son, Yanuel, Benjamin Molina, who was born in 2008, gets to shoot hoops with these stands, but if he has grown too tall for them, maybe he has left it for use by his two junior siblings, a sister and a brother. These three kids are from Molina's only marriage to his high school girlfriend, Wanda Molina. They had met while still schooling back in Puerto Rico when we were married in 2007. Family currently lives in the mansion we just showed you but prior to this, they'd lived in another mansion at 431 River Point Way, Jupiter, Florida, a 10,433 square foot estate that was developed in 2007. The Molinas purchased it in 2012 for $7.2 million, and this mansion too was jaw-dropping. It was an eight bedroom, seven and a half bathroom with a 300 feet waterfront, tennis and basketball court, and a pool. And it seems like Yachty likes his garage to be three because this one also had three garages. May not have a batting cage, but it does have a baseball diamond. But after he had bought his new home in St. Louis, Missouri, he listed it for sale at an asking price of $17 million. Nevertheless, the house was later sold at $8 million. This is obviously far from what he wanted, but he no doubt made it a bit of a profit at the end of the day. Besides, why would he even worry when he's making way more profit elsewhere? Throughout his 19 years in the MLB, which he spent fully dedicated to the St. Louis Cardinals, he enjoyed nearly $200 million in salary earnings alone. He also collected endorsement deals with brands like M4, New Balance, and T-Mobile. The exact amounts he earned from these deals are not exactly known, but we are sure they're huge. And for someone who barely received any endorsement deals during his career, these ones were a breath of fresh air. And according to multiple sources, he has a net worth of $45 million at the time of his retirement. And with all that cash, he's managed to let loose some of it. Yachty runs a charitable foundation known as Foundation 4, which was founded in 2010 by himself and his wife. The number four is representative of his jersey number as a player, but the foundation has done great things beyond the number four. With their mission aimed at alleviating suffering and creating a good future for underprivileged children while also helping victims of natural disaster, they have managed to provide donations for childhood cancer patients in Puerto Rico. Additionally, when Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico in September 2017, Yachty and his wife set up a GoFundMe page to raise $1 million for the victims. So now that he's retired, what next? Well, he would definitely continue being a charitable person, and one thing is for sure, he'd not be letting go of baseball. It's too deep in his blood. He was born into a baseball family, into a baseball culture, in fact. His place of birth and upbringing was Bayamon a town that is known for raising a lot of baseball players. Yachty's father, Benjamin Molina Sr., played amateur baseball as a second baseman and is the all-time hit leader in Liga Baseball professional. Roberto Clemente, while having a batting average of .320 and being honored by the Puerto Rican Hall of Fame in 2002. Yachty's two elder brothers, Jose and Benji Molina, were also major contributors and achievers in the MLB, Benji was also a talented catcher with two Gold Glove awards and a World Series title. While Jose, another talented catcher, won two World Series championships. So no, baseball isn't going anywhere for the retired Yadier. He'd most likely be going into managing as the New York Times has reported. If you enjoyed this video about Yadier Molina's mansion, check out the video on the screen now or the one we posted below because we're sure you'll like that one too. See you there.